The question for Chevy owners, how much are Vortec heads worth on a small block Chevy? You know, if you upgrade. The other question, why didn't you just start with a Vortec headed small block to begin with? All good questions, but what I'm most excited about, I actually have video of our upgraded motor running on the dyno. Let's get going. In this video, I've got upgrades to two different small block Chevy 350 motors. The first one is a GM crate motor. You know, the 190 horsepower crate motor that GM sells to everybody. Your bare bones, basic small block. We're gonna show you what happens when we upgrade it with Vortec heads and a nice camshaft. I'm also gonna compare that to what happens if I just go get a Vortec motor from the wrecking yard. What happens when I carburate that thing? How much power does it make? Test motor number two is an L82. That's right, the legendary L82 from the 70s. We're gonna show you what happens when you upgrade the top end stuff on an L82. How much more power do we make? Let's find out. To illustrate the gains offered by upgrading a 350 small block Chevy, we started off with your very basic 350 small block Chevy. And normally I would go to the wrecking yard and get one and we would do that. But this one was actually a brand new GM crate motor. It was their basic bare bones kind of thing. It was their 190 horsepower crate motor. That's how they advertise it. But in reality, it makes more than that when you put, they sell it as a long block and it includes, it, it is a four bolt main, but <laughs> that might be the only fantastic thing it has going for it. It's uh, it's obviously a, um, a cast crank, powdered metal rods. It has cast pistons. It's eight and a half to one. It has small valve, the 194, 15, uh, like an 882 head, a big chamber head, the 76 uh, cc chamber head. It's got a really small flat tap camshaft in it, a 383 401 lift <laughs> that hardly opens the valves at all, and a 194 202 duration and 112 degree lobe separation angle. And as always, all of those duration numbers I give you are the 50 numbers, they're not the advertised duration. It has a 1.5 uh, rocker ratio. You know, it's kind of just your bare bones deal. It would be a replacement motor for like a truck or something. And they they rated at 190 horsepower. But the reality is that when you put a dual plane intake manifold on it and a like 650 uh, Holly or any kind of four barrel on it and a, and a distributor with headers on it, it makes closer to 260 horsepower. So, <laughs> excuse me, which, and we've run a few of these, so it's, you know, it always works out pretty well. So here's our just basic crate motor. And as I said, we put a dual plane on it and a, and a 650 Holly and the distributor and then the long tube headers that we always run on the dyno to start out our baseline. And when we did that, our 190 horsepower crate motor did exactly as as the other ones that we've run have, have done it produced 263 horsepower <laughs> at a very high rpm how does 4400 rpm sound for the power peak and the torque peak uh well it was not a peak really but it was 355 foot pounds so it yeah, had we loaded this thing lower, which we should, probably should have done, it, it would the, the torque curve would still be out there. But that's that's kind of what these things make, and they, they do fairly well. And if you're just looking for a low RPM kind of motor that makes decent torque and will drive around forever, then these crate motors actually are, work pretty well. But the other option is just to go to a wrecking yard and get a late model Vortec motor, which I'll show you later uh, what's going on with that. So what we did with this 190 horsepower crate motor, obviously the things that are limiting us are since we put a dual plane intake manifold, that actually works fairly well. And that 650 Holly works, or the 650 carburetor works well because that's enough carburetor to feed a lot of power, certainly a lot more than this. So the dual plane was not a limiting factor, but the cylinder heads and the camshaft definitely were. So what we did was replace both of those at the same time. And here's what happened when we did our cylinder head and camshaft upgrade. So we jumped up to, 352 horsepower and 391 foot-pounds of torque and what we did was install a set of late model from the junkyard um, the Vortec heads now they did have a, we did uh, stick a little bit more spring on them and we installed a decent camshaft in this thing as well to kind of show you what was going on so we installed the uh, Extreme Energy or Extreme X Extreme Marine, because this is what we had. We didn't have an Extreme Energy. Extreme Marine 270 cam. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for you. 
it's a it's a mild cam and it's good as you can see i mean it's still only making peak power at 54 or 5500 rpm so it's not a high rpm piece it's still got good torque you know down around 4000 rpm and even below that um, all the way down at 3000 it was producing over 350 foot pounds so it worked pretty well and we know that those vortec heads um, they are a big upgrade from that factory 882 head you know, it's got a big chamber on it, which is not ideal. And and they just don't flow as well as a Vortec head is. The Vortec head actually works fairly well. So here's what happens when we uh, when we did the Vortec head upgrade and the camshaft. But you might be wondering what happens if we just go to the wrecking yard and get a Vortec motor and take the fuel injection off of it and run it with like this dual plane manifold and headers and stuff with the stock cam in it to kind of give you an idea where we are. So this is what happens when we run a, this is a Vortec motor that I went and picked up from the wrecking yard and we ran it just in stock trim. All I did was take the fuel injection off. We put a Vortec specific dual plane intake manifold on it, same carburetors, same basic distributor setup, and just, just did advance the timing and stuff till we made the, the most power. So with just that stock one, it made 313 horsepower. So you could see kind of what the cam gives us. Although, you know, we're kind of comparing apples and oranges here. So I want you guys to know that I just want to give you guys an idea what a stock Vortec headed motor would be uh, if you go get it from the wrecking yard and put a dual plane on it. And then you could upgrade that obviously with camshaft because the 190 horsepower crate motor has a different piston in it and probably a different compression than a, than a Vortec head would be. But these are our combinations. This is what happened when we upgrade it. It's very simple. It's easy to get that kind of power. And there's even more available if we put more camshaft in. So let's get to our next combination. The second test was run on a slightly different motor. As a matter of fact, it was one of the legends of the small block community. It's an L82. So if you're not familiar with that, it was an L82 was used in performance applications in the Corvette and stuff. And, and basically, it was the low compression version of the L46, which was kind of originally the 350 horse 350. So the L82 is rated at around 250 horsepower, um, you know, in the net, in the later net racing or the... <laughs> <clears throat> the net rating so it 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 was a good performance motor and it was comparable to you know i mean if you think to 250 horsepower it made as much power as the the tune port motors and stuff that came later the fuel injected stuff but it was equipped with it was nine to one compression it was equipped with the 882 heads it had a four barrel quadrajet intake manifold on it and the difference between this and like the that GM crate motor that we used previously in the first test was that this thing actually had some kind of camshaft in it. It had the L46 cam in it, which was a 450, 460 lift and 222 degrees of duration. I don't know what the lobe separation angle is. I couldn't actually find that, but that was a performance cam compared to that crate motor cam. So that's probably why this thing made, you know, more power than that crate motor. But run with uh, you know, a, a performance distributor, inch and three quarter long tube headers, and a quadrajet on our L82. This thing produced 313 horsepower and did fairly well on torque, did 355 foot pounds of torque. So, not too bad for a nine to one performance kind of <laughs> smog motor and really the only thing separating this from any of the motors that you'll go find in trucks or anything else is that this thing had a um, you know at least a halfway decent kind of performance gm factory camshaft in it but we wanted to upgrade this and show you guys what happens when you make these kinds of upgrades so just like with the previous test we upgraded the uh, cylinder heads and the camshaft on this thing and here is our upgrade. We installed a set of 
RHS heads, and they were 200cc intake ports. They uh, were they were 64cc chambers, so the smaller chamber obviously added compression. They flowed a lot more than that 882 head, so they were basically better all the way around. And we also installed a better camshaft, although that one wasn't terrible. But we installed an Extreme Energy XE274H, still a hydraulic flat tappet camshaft. So we'll show you what the specs are on that camshaft, and you know it's a good street kind of performance cam and after we go over this i got that we have one final test that we ran but we did run a dual plane intake and a 750 holly carburetor replacing the quadrajet you in all honestly you probably could make this same power with the quadrajet they work really well and they're a good q jet intake manifolds but with after our upgrade our cylinder head and camshaft and intake upgrade this thing made 414 horsepower and had some nice torque production too 415 foot pounds now this was a good upgrade and you know typical kind of aluminum head and camshaft small block this works really well but i did another test and i wanted to show you guys because there's a lot of questions from guys about hey what about carb spacers do carb spacers work well most people want the answer that's universal yes carb spacers work they always add power or no they don't or the reality is that sometimes they do and sometimes they don't and it depends on what intake you tested on and it depends on what carb spacer you test so there are different types there's tapered spacers there's four holes there's opens there's different heights there's half inch one inch two inch you know you could stack them you could do all kinds of crazy stuff but what we tested on this was a four hole spacer and i'll be able to show you a picture of that so you can take a look at that from wilson and on and we were testing it on a dual plane intake so that's important to note that because on a single plane it acts differently but here's what happens when we installed the spacer on a dual plane and i would say that this is more typical on a dual plane we picked up power at the top as a matter of fact from about 4200 rpm on up the peak power was up to 419 horsepower and peak torque was actually about the same at 415 foot pounds it just had to it just happened at 100 rpm higher but if you notice down here we actually lost a little bit of power and that's kind of typical um, this is a little better than had we done an open spacer, uh, but on a dual plane intake, you're basically kind of changing what the intake style is because you're making it a common plenum. So it has a big effect on what's going on with the dual plane intake. But this is our upgrade for the L82, and it worked really well. And like I said, you can apply that to almost any small block that you go find in the wrecking yard. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about the upgrades on our small block Chevy? Now, the reality is, what I would do, I don't think I'd go buy a crate motor. I'd just go to the junkyard, get a Vortec headed small block right from the yard. They're cheap, they're easy to upgrade, put springs on it, put a cam on it, an intake manifold, and away you go. That's a good combination. If you want to get more elaborate, obviously there are more elaborate and more powerful small block Chevy heads available. All kinds of aftermarket aluminum stuff. You got cheap Chinese stuff. You got good stuff from TrickFlow and Airflow Research and Brodex and all of those guys. So there's a ton of stuff to do for the small block Chevy. What I'm most excited about, we actually got to hear one run. We got to hear it make noise on the dyno because I could find the video. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. More testing coming up.